Dear students, welcome to another lecture in Statistical Quality Control. We were discussing about the control charts. Now let us see the difference between X bar, P and C charts. All the three in one table. The first comparison is about the data used. The X bar and R charts are uh, using the data of variables whereas P and uh, NP charts and C and U charts these are using uh, the attribute data. Then the form of input data you see these are the measurable values of a quality characteristic anything that is measured with the measuring instruments we have measured precision measuring instruments you have measured okay for, uh, for X bar and R chart whereas uh, these two no they are used they are using number of defectives produced in each subgroup yeah for P, P and NP charts it is number of defectives whereas for C and U chart it is number of defects found in one product okay now the purpose of uh, the uh, charts is for X bar R charts to control individual quality characteristic that means individual means you know uh, like uh, just the diameter alone or the uh, thickness alone such an individual characteristic quality characteristic whereas P and NP charts to control overall fraction defectives in all subgroups or in the entire process and uh, C and the U charts to control overall number of defects in every component or part or product. Then sample size for X bar charts, you know, you have to make actual measurements with the measuring instruments. It is time consuming. So normally the sample size will be small, uh, four or five samples they take. Whereas in case of P and NP charts, the sample sizes may be ranging between uh, 20 to 100 whereas C and U charts it is defects no? because the, here no, you uh, select uh, area like 1 meter square uh, as in a cloth or something like that or in one, one assembly you know like that uh, you choose a convenient uh, um, uh, convenient thing okay then advantages of the various charts the x bar and r chart provides detailed information it gives you exact values even to decimals and, for, and even to micron level it gives uh, about the process uh, average and variation Pro micron level measurements are made and uh, uh, detailed information about the process average and variation uh, this uh, x bar and ch r chart give and uh, the data available to give accurate results is fully utilized. Whatever is data is available, is, we are fully using in X bar R charts. Whereas uh, in uh, P and NP charts, no, they are easy to understand because X bar and R charts are not so easy to understand. Whereas P and NP charts are easy to understand. Then less time consuming because we are using um, uh, go no go gauges and uh, uh, such kind of fast uh, techniques and uh, uh, they don't give uh, exact picture but provide an overall trend and uh, overall quality of the, uh, picture of quality status they give so this is about p and np charts and uh, if you come to C and U charts, the advantages are, you know, they carry all the advantages of uh, P and NP charts. In addition, uh, the C and U chart provide extent of defectiveness by which the necessary and corrective action, correct action can be taken to prevent a recurrence of the defects. So this compared to P and NP charts, C and U charts give. Uh, one more advantage it gives the extent of defectiveness okay this is about this comparison now let us come to uh, another important topic that is CP and CPK uh, indices 
See, these are two indices we are studying. These are about the process capabilities. You see, they decide, uh, uh, they are used for deciding the capability of the process, whether our capability, uh, uh, whether our process is capable of producing within the tolerances given the design tolerances or not. For that, you know, these two indices CP and CPK are used. So when we speak about the capability process, we often refer to these couple of indices, CP and CPK. Now, uh, first let us talk about this index, CP index. Okay, now CP index is the process capability index or the process capability ratio. Um, and uh, sometimes it is called as process uh, potential also okay see what is cp cp is the specification range specification range means data specification the design specification range that means the uh, that means the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit upon the process capability now process capability is six sigma so mathematically we can give it as uh, cp is equal to usl minus LSL upon 6 Sigma. So assuming that the process is normally distributed, then the denominator 6 Sigma uh, is taken. Okay. So this is the formula for CP. USL minus LSL upon 6 Sigma. Okay. Now, if CP is 1, it means the specification range or the, uh, the specification width is the same as the process width or the process capability you see the up here when we are talking the upper one is specification width lower is the process width you see if cp means one one means what both are same okay then only you can get uh, one numerator and denominator are one okay so when the process average is centered that means in the center of the chart in the center of the chart your normal distribution to center also comes that is when it is centered and uh, then the probability of actual dimension to lie within the specification limits is 0 0.9973 okay suppose uh, cp is less than 1 when it is less than 1 then that means the process variability is outside the specification limit less than one means what is it less than one means the denominator is larger or the process capability or process width is larger and specification width is shorter that means within the specification limits you are not able to produce that is the meaning so this condition is undesirable cp less than one is undesirable that means you know your process is not capable you know just by you know this value of cp you will be able to say it is uh, it is a, it is a, it will it will give you the, uh, the the about it will tell you about the capability of the uh, process uh, your process is not capable uh, to produce within the specified limits okay whereas if cp is greater than one that means the process variability is lower than the specification range that means uh, capable it is capable of producing the parts within the specification limits <coughs> so the what, what is actually desired is cp greater than one is it see cp is equal to one no you see you can say that uh, even here uh, you know our uh, process is capable but you know the, your uh, thing you should be uh, you know your uh, it should be centered and you know there is a, 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 you know even a little deviation from there you know may will cause your products to um, uh, products to fail okay so what is desirable is cp should be greater than one okay so the process capability ratio cp measures it gives you the uh, the idea or it gives you the measure how well the product requirements match with the process capabilities 
say the higher CP value, the better it is. Higher value of higher the CP value is better uh, match between the product and process. So, thus the CP is the measure of the ability of the process to meet the desired specifications. Okay, and uh, it shows the closeness of part of a group with the target value. See, uh, so CP is giving you the measure the of the ability. You are uh, able or not? What uh, what is able? Your process is capable or not? If it is capable, it should have a CP value, um, you know, a higher CP value, more than one. And, uh, you know, even if it is two or something, it is very good. Okay. Now, next in this index is CP, CPK. Now, CPK index is the position of total process variation. Uh, the distribution width that is six sigma in relation to the mean specification actually no cpk is called as actual capability cp is called as a, a process uh, potential and cpk is called as the actual capability okay cpk reflects the current process averages proximity to either usl or lsl you see cp is not bothered you see if upper specification limit or lower specification limit is there so you were uh, you know your process uh, capability that uh, that uh, what we say that uh, uh, bell shaped normal distribution curve you know whether it is falling in the center or towards one side or towards the left side or towards the right side it is not bothered as long as it is there it will say okay our process is capable but you know cpk gives you the measure how close it to the left hand side or how close it to the right hand side you know like that it gives you say I will show you uh, one figure no yeah you see here you see see this is the lower specification limit this is the upper specification limit okay this is our uh, central line okay now this is our normal distribution uh, our uh, you know uh, our six sigma is here okay see now this is falling see here also there is gap here also this is gap and it is a centered okay and uh, here you see your cp is uh, two your cpk is two okay whereas in this uh, case you see in this case what is happening is you see your cp you now still says there is so much gap on this side but it, it is neglecting to see that it has come close to the uh, the upper specification limit but your cpk says now that, that cpk see you, you you take like this cp is taking the entire width and cpk is taking only half of it okay uh, so okay okay <laughs> you see it is only it is it's it's a the center this center ah this is this is saying you can say like cp is taking how much gap is there on either side whereas cpk is taking the center of this normal distribution how close it to the uh, um, nearest uh, uh, specification limit now here in the nearest specification limit is the upper specification limit from the upper specification limit how close it is it is only one okay whereas for cp cp oh it still says you know so much gap is there two gap is there you see like that so in the third case you see cp uh, cpk you see now this is central line has come to the upper specification limit it has come to zero okay and this has fallen outside okay like that so uh, now cpk that's why you know cpk gives you the actual capability you see it is not uh, uh, just sufficient to be inside the uh, specification limits you should see how close to the edges it is you see if it is closer to one of the edges that means no not much uh, uh, deviation it will accept okay so that's why cpk is given as the minimum of these two values 
that is how uh, see x bar minus lower specification limit upon 3 sigma or um, upper specification limit minus x bar upon 3 sigma is a minimum of these two you calculate this value also this value also whichever comes less no that is cpk is a here then you know, they have shown with an example now upper specification limit is 20 lower specification limit is 8 okay now what is the gap here 12 is the gap here okay and your sigma is 2 okay and your x bar is a 16 x bar is a 16 hmm? now this x bar is 16 means you see is it closer to the upper specification limit or the lower specification limit it is closer to the upper specification limit can you see and what is the gap between this and this you see from 20 to 16 only you know this much is there okay anyway now let us calculate the cp value CP value is upper specification limit minus lower specification limit uh, upon 6 sigma. Upper specification limit is 20, lower specification limit is 8, uh, 6 into sigma is 2. So this is coming to 1. CP is only 1. Okay. So now the now the uh, uh, here they have not calculated CPK okay but anyway cpk now that uh, cpk is calculated in the uh, next uh, slide see here no the cpk is minimum of these two no so here x bar is 16 lower specification limit is 8 and uh, sigma is 2 so if you calculate no this value is coming to 0 0.67 and this value is coming to 2 so which which is the minimum of these two 0 0.67 is the minimum see now you have got cp as 1 okay whereas, whereas cpk is only 0 0.67 so this is giving you the actual capability so it states that the process available uh, average is currently near the uh, upper specification limit you see now it is easy it is more clue to, you know even just by looking at this also you'll be able to say uh, now you will be um, you will be able to say that you know this is upper specification limit is 20 whereas x bar is 16 so this is closer you know you can say it is nearer to the upper specification limits so if the process were centered at x bar is equal to 14 that is equal to average specification limit then the cpk would have been one okay but you know it is not a centered at, uh, it is not at 14 it is at 16 okay therefore no it is reduced to 0 0.67 it means that the if, if the uh, actual average is equal to the midpoint specification if it is if it is you know if it is falling like this you know if if it is you know this is sent it is uh, um, uh, your non normal distribution center line and uh, your uh, central line of the specifications both are matching you only in that case cpk is equal to cp okay but uh, in any other case that means you know if it is falling on the, this left side or right side now cpk is going to be less than cp okay so uh, you know th this is giving you cpk is giving you the measure of the um, you know uh, the, it, it is giving you the actual capability of the process okay so they see this is the, 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 this will be the more desirable thing okay but if you are moving you know if your process is moving towards one side like this you know that means you know your you, your uh, you know process capability actual capability is reduced okay and uh, and such things you no know, these things are not desirable at all okay suppose uh, here this figure you see 
now the in this case this is the first case this is the second case in the first case what uh, you know th these are the uh, two limits okay you take one as upper specification limit the other as lower specification limit and you know you have uh, plotted your uh, control charts and you know you see you see the first one is within inside okay this is fine but in the second one has fallen this side out the third one has fallen that side out the fourth one is in the and you know like that if you see so one is some are falling inside some are falling either this side out or that side out you know such a thing such kind of you know process it is an unstable process and it is a incapable not capable process whereas if you see this process you see this is the upper specification limit this is the lower specification limit and all your process uh, process uh, you know widths these are falling within the specification limits okay such a such a process is called stable process it's a capable process you see for you know you should evaluate first you know before taking any uh, orders from your customers okay you should see whether you will be able to uh, you will be able to produce the parts with the quality that they want you see if your machines are old or if you're not your workers are not skillful or if you're not good using the good material or something then now you cannot expect to you know your uh, process uh, uh, will be able to produce your pro process is capable you cannot say even if you say you know many rejections will be there ultimately it will be costing you uh, more and your uh, profits and others you will not be able to see okay okay next uh, uh, th th that was about CPU and CPK. Now let us see about uh, one problem. Here we are will solve one problem. Uh, you see, the the problem statement says samples of size five uh, five si sample size five have been collected with following observations. Okay, these are the following observations uh, and also given our a2 value is given d3 is given d4 is given these are not what normally are available in the standard tables okay because in the exam you cannot take the tables you know they are directly giving you in the question itself now the question they are saying is draw the appropriate chart and uh, give your conclusion now sample one sample two you know in sample one there are five items sample two there are five items five items and also for that they have calculated x bar and r x bar r x bar r and all these things they have calculated and given now now they are asking uh first i did you know draw the appropriate chart which chart you are going to use that's what they are saying now which chart you will be using you know you see the, these are you know here itself in the table itself it shows x bar and r so x bar r charts only we are going to use because you know these are uh, you know decimal places you know decimal values decimal values indicate what that these are variable this is a variable data not attribute data attributes will have whole numbers not decimal places like this so this shows that we have to draw it you know variable control chart and variable control charts are x bar chart and r chart okay so now identify the appropriate uh, control chart means you know because the data given is a variable in variable form how are you knowing by knowing looking at the decimal places itself you will know it is a variable form so the appropriate charts that uh, that will be used are x bar chart and r chart now first what you have to see is you have to find out the central line well, now for the central line this is the formula sigma x bar upon n x double bar is equal to sigma x bar upon n now sigma x bar means you know all these things some summation of the all these things x x bar values and divided by number how many samples are there 10 samples are there so then you will get x double bar so x double bar value we have got as 2.00195 now next you have to calculate average uh, range r bar this is for what this x double bar is the central line for the x bar chart and r bar is the central line for the r chart so here also it is sigma r upon n sigma r means you know summation of all these uh, r values and uh, n is 10 number of samples is 10 when we are using small n that means the sample size like this 5 and when you are using capital n it is the number of samples 
uh, here it is 10 this one so you we have calculated now r bar you have got it as 0 0.018 and the fourth step is you have to find out the upper uh, upper uh, uh, control limit and lower control limit u cl and uh, lcl for x bar chart now x bar chart is you know you you uh, you have this x double bar plus a2 into r you know a2 value is given so you put here and you will get uh, the upper uh, control limit and similarly you can get the lower control limit also similarly for r charts also you get the upper control limit and the lower control limit see uh, see one minute here something is not printed okay anyway say upper control limit is coming to 0 0.038 for r chart and lower control limit for r chart is coming to zero now here sixth step is to plot the x bar r chart first what you have to do is you have to draw this uh, plot the center line now center line for x bar chart is uh, where x double bar is and the upper control limit lower control limit these dotted lines you plot and uh, now each of these values see 2.008 1.998 you know these are you have to plot like this and afterwards you see now your x bar chart is uh, plotted and uh, and you see none, none of the points are going uh, outside the control limits that means you can say you can conclude that uh, this process is under control similarly r chart also now you take the values of r r1 r2 r3 like that these values you come and plot here r1 r2 r3 and you see here also you know uh, we can conclude as all the points fall inside the control limits the process is under control see that's what they said give your conclusion your we have, our conclusion is that all pro points are within the uh, control limits the process is under control if any point has gone outside now you would have said that the process is not in control you could have said like that. okay now next another problem now this problem is for uh, uh, this attribute charts okay following are the inspection results of magnets for five observations draw appropriate control chart and conclude okay week one in week one number of magnets inspected 724 um, magnets they inspected out of which defects found are 48 you see now uh, this is the, for the first week for the second week third week fourth week fifth week they have given okay now what they are saying is draw the appropriate control chart now you have to decide you know is this where um, uh, data that you have got is it uh, uh, the variable data or attribute data huh? this is attribute data see defectives you know the moment defectives the word comes uh, it is either n chart or np chart now then you have to choose which chart you are going to use okay see now uh, let us come to the uh, solution now identify the appropriate chart means since the number of defectives are given defectives are given okay therefore it is np chart or p chart and then if the sample size is varying now this is the sample size see 724 are inspected next day 724 are not inspected this is some other number third day again 724 but the fourth day again some other number you see this is not a uh, uniform number constant uh, same number if had it been same number no we would have used np chart but because it is varying we are going to use p chart okay so this is the first uh, thing that we have found out we are going to draw the p chart and now second is you have to calculate the fraction defective for each work now fraction defective uh, for each for each week you have to find out now sample calculation of fraction defective for first week you see now you just take these two values now 724 uh, are inspected and 40 are found are defective so fraction defective will be 48 upon 724 it is 0 0.06 this is the fraction defective for the first week 
okay similarly in similar manner we can calculate fraction defectives for the remaining four weeks now for this also you have to calculate this also you have to calculate for all these things you have to calculate what are the fraction defectives these calculated fra fraction defectives can be shown in tabular format along with the corresponding lot number in the following uh, table okay this, this is the weeks one two three four five and uh, The number of magnets inspected is given in the second uh, column and the third column defectives are given and the fraction defectives what you, you have calculated here we, here uh, uh, we have seen uh, for the first week 0.06 of where uh, 0.06 first week this is the second week third week and all these things you have to calculate and you see. Now, now here now you can sum all these things so totally inspected see 3626 and total number of defects is 339 if you add up all these things okay now center line is p bar now p bar is total number of defectives upon total number of magnets inspected defectives are 339 and uh, total inspector 3626 you know from this you will get p bar that is the central line for the p chart now now the average number of magnets inspected that means you know that is uh, small n inspected in all five weeks is this much and total number of weeks is five so this is the average 725.2 you see actually it is some are uh, below that some are above that but anyway you are getting a average value 725.2 this is small n now control limits for p chart now these these are the two formulae that we use and using these two formulae uh, p bar we found out small n we found out and that's all the data required and you can find out this upper control limit and lower control limits. see now the center line is p bar now p bar we calculated and we found out as 0.093 that is the center line here and upper control limit is uh, this one 0.125 lower control limit is 0.06 you see these are all fraction defectives are taken on the y-axis on the x-axis weak numbers that's what we have taken okay so if it is 0.06 means this is 0 0.05 0 0.06 so from here you draw the dotted line now 0 0.093 means 0 0.09 is there 0 0.10 is there 93 means you know from here you know a little closer to 0 0.9 0 0.09 and a little away from 0 0.1 so here you will be the center line and the 0 0.125 is between these two between 0 0.12 and 0 0.13 central line is that, that uh, 0 0.125 so you plot that and after plotting that you take those p values what what values you have to take ah, you have to take the fraction defectives and the fraction defectives for the first week is 0 0.06 second week third week fourth week fifth week you see you you plot like this and after plotting all this now you look at the chart and you say is any point lying outside the control limit no so what can what what can we conclude as all the points fall inside the control limits the process is under control that's what we can conclude okay say so actually in your textbook there are so many other um, uh, numerical problems solved numerical problems are there please go through them okay and uh, uh, I will not be covering any more uh, numerical problems so uh, so with this lecture we have come to the end of this uh, sixth uh, chapter now only one more chapter is remaining that is the that is chapters title is acceptance sampling so that we will uh, start from the next lecture and uh, uh, and uh, we will continue in the next lecture so we'll stop here today thank you